today's video I've got a mess of parts that I bought from this Asian dude in Davis. I've got a TP-Link WDN4800. It's an N wireless N Wi-Fi PCIe card. And I've actually never owned one of these. I'm kind of curious to see how exactly it compares with, say, just a USB one, because I have plenty of those around. And, I mean, I know it's N, and it's got, it's, it's a tri-band one, so it's got three antennas. And then I've got this, which is a GeForce GT730. Uh, it's got this little fan on it, and a little ex extruded aluminum heat sink. It's actually single slot only, I think. I think the shroud might just be barely enough to intrude on a card above it if it was, uh, so it might still, I don't know. I'll take a look. And then I've got this, which is a Corsair C6, CX600M. These are really robust power supplies. I've never had an issue with any one of these. I don't know if other people have. They have sob stories with the CX600M, but, you know, Corsair is a decent brand, and these power supplies, I've had good experiences with these power supplies, and they sell a lot of them, so I assume that whatever quality issues that they might have had with these have long since been worked out. And this is the M model, so this is the modular one, which has a couple of modular plugs so that you can unplug and plug some of these in. These cables right here, which are probably for, yeah, peripheral SATA and PCIe power for a graphics card. So I'm going to test all these components because I actually uh, just picked them up from the dude and didn't really test them. I mean, he, he looked like an honest guy. I also got these from him as well. Corsair Vengeance RAM. It's uh, four gigabyte modules. So, yeah. I'm gonna test all this. I've got the hardware over there to test it with. So, yeah, let's let's go do that. I mean, the GT730 and the Wi-Fi card I can obviously just pop in, but it's an AM3 motherboard, so fortunately can suit. It can fit DDR3. And then this CX600M, this is going to be a pain in the butt to put in, but I mean, might as well. So I might need to get a screwdriver. Oh no, I forgot, service screws. Well, I might, yeah, well, I don't necessarily need uh, to screw in the PCIe cards before running them. Especially if I'm just going to have them in to just test them and not necessarily to run them up. I mean, the GT730 I might want to secure, because I'll probably want to run some benchmarks on that and make sure it's running okay. It needs those. This is, I do like how it kind of sits on that metal tray right there. So, the power supply, even though it's oddly positioned in this case. Oh, I didn't actually get a chance to see the rating of this power supply. Focus! Jeez, what is up with this thing? There we go. I had to hit auto. I guess I turned autofocus off. But yeah, there's the rails. So this power supply has been powering that GTX 560X SE and, well, a 20 watt Athlon X2. So, I mean, it's not really a challenge for it. It shouldn't be, anyways. I mean, it's probably drawing a lot of powers from the, the 12 volt rails, but, I mean, that's mostly what you're going to be seeing in power supply like this. And this is a. This is from an OEM case, so it's obviously not going to... It's... As much as it has a low uh, wattage rating, I mean, it's well made. It's not a cheap Chinese power supply, for sure. It's made to do the job well. Otherwise, whoever... Whatever this power supply came out of, Dell or Gateway or whatever, I, I forget. They're not going to contract out these people to make these power supplies if they're going to make a dumb one. I mean, not that I still would recommend you run these sort of power supplies in this way. But I've been running the GTX 560 SE. I actually folded with it just to try it out, just to see like what sort of point count I would get, and also if the machine could cope. Rand is fine for a week. But yeah, see? DDR3 right there. Athlon X2. There's the uh, GTX 560 SE down there, so that is coming out. Again, I'll uh, show you guys the incredible setup I have. One PCIe, two PCIe power connector, to a single six pin PCIe power connector, to two Molex power connectors. I love it. I love it. I love it. 
Fortunately, the GT730 doesn't need any of that. The GT730 is a low power card that doesn't need any power connectors for PCIe. So, move it here. I'm moving all this up here. So, there's my GTX 560SE. It's not a bad looking card, honestly. It's just stupid. Like, why? Why do you have two six pin PCIe connectors for a 560? Especially one that has an aluminum extruded heatsink and one single dinky fan. It's a dual slot design, too. I mean, I don't know. Maybe there's something that I'm missing in the logic of this. Anyways, back to this. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this power supply from the machine after unplugging it from everything. And this is going on the ground right here. And then this guy is going in. Yeah. I'm going to laugh so hard that the fan is not going to be facing. The okay, it is. Please tell me that's the right screw holes. Yep, lines up. So I'll go ahead and screw in the CX600M. Probably just two screws because, again, we're just looking to diagnose this setup. Not looking to permanently mount this power supply in here. CX600M in a machine like this would honestly be probably the most absurd waste. Um, I was thinking I could just run the 560 and the 730 in the same machine, which if you had, you know, a proper motherboard would be totally an option, but uh, this motherboard only has one 16x slot. So unfortunately, that is not an option. However, it does have a 1x slot. Right there, just above the 16x slot. So. I can run the Wi-Fi card. There we go. You get out of there. Alright. And... Wi-Fi card, where are you? Oh, this is interesting. So, I need to just slip the antennas out through the thing right there. And then I could just, yeah, there we go. Really? Nope, it's a mystery. That's so we're not getting anything right now. Oh, the hard drive indicator is going on and off. Is the graphics card plugged in all the way? Looks like it is. And it's spinning. That is spinning. A blank screen. Making no sense. Did someone try and clean this screen? They did an awful job. It's got streaks everywhere on it. Dude. Like, really? Is it too much to ask? For shit to work the first time? Well, at least I got the one BIOS beep, so... You know what? I guarantee you guys... It's... Going through the motherboard's integrated graphics. And now TV's off. No signal, right? Yep, no signal. Okay, I have to hold the graphics card. Auto adjusting. Black. Nothing. Hard drive LED is behaving normally. Uh, it can't work the first time. Why? I just want it to work. Please. 
I'm pretty sure it's the video card. I'm almost certain that that's what it is. That the video card just doesn't want to display properly. Maybe it's trying to display through the DVI port and it just can't. Well, obviously because it's not plugged in. So I need to... This in? It is just an issue. Nope, this is it. Alright, that's what I need. It's a DVI to HDMI cable. It's just straight up HDMI on one side and DVI on the other. So now... Hasn't shut off yet. It's not going to become a broken record. So I think I will go ahead and reseat the graphics card and then screw it in. So that way I know for a fact that it's not how the graphics card is seated. Get the motherboard! Get out! Come on! Well, hi. Um. I'm gonna have both plugged in. I'm gonna have the VGA cord plugged in. I'm gonna have the DVI plugged in. out there is kind of, I don't know, it's a bit alarming to me, so I almost want to secure it, but I'm just still going to wait on that. HDMI 1, HDMI 2, ARC DVI, so I guess they would want me to plug it into this one. I can do that. Uh, I think we're good to go. And more firmly plug in the Wi-Fi card to make sure that it's not going to cause any problems. And yeah, I think we are. Yeah, let's power this. Fast up a bit. Come on, come on, baby. Beep. One single beep from the BIOS. Let's uh, switch up the input to, the, I have to point it right at the IR sensor, there we go. And HDMI 2, come on, give us something please. Yay! So yeah, I guess it won't output through VGA first thing. Updating your system, Windows 10, go figure. So. Graphics card for sure works. Power supply for sure works. I mean, that's not to be unexpected. And the RAM for sure works. Both sticks, because otherwise we would be having issues. You know, we've had to take out one and then take out the other and replace it with this old cruddy RAM that I got. Actually, this RAM is not bad. It's just it's just it's HP OEM RAM from Samsung. Two gig modules. So both installed makes four gigs, which is you know enough for a machine that you just plan to use for basic basic tasks and pretty cool so I've got a perfectly good GT730 perfectly good 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM perfectly good power supply 600 watt power supply which can definitely go into a future mid-range gaming build with a GTX 970 or 1070 or uh, I, my Wi-Fi card work. yeah, all the hardware that I said I was going to show off in this video works perfectly fine, and yeah, it was quite an adventure getting it all up and running, but I'm happy, and that is the video here, thank you for sticking it out, thanks for watching.